Welcome back to Magical Memories with Maddie the Podcast. Uh, you can either watch the video form of this on my YouTube channel or you can pull up the My Disney Experience app as I talk to you and I'm going to basically walk you guys through the My Disney Experience app for this episode. My goal with this podcast is to basically be your guide to everything you need to know for your next vacation and the My Disney Experience app can be quite a complicated Um, ordeal. So to help you guys out a bit, I've decided to make an entire episode telling you all of the functions of the My Disney Experience app. So like I said, you can either listen while you're on the app yourself, or you can open up the video form where you can see what I am doing as I'm talking through it. But I will talk you through it in a way that you can do it yourself as well. So first, you're going to open the app. And as you can see, you can see the Walt Disney World logo. And when you open the app, it immediately opens up on the map page and it says filter at the top left, show list at the top right, and wait times with an arrow next to it in the middle at the top. And you can basically see like a map. Now, the map looks like it's just of Magic Kingdom, but this is actually a, a zoomed in version of the entire map, which is of all of Walt Disney World because you have to actually filter to a specific park or resort or something in order for it to really just be the one area but it's still all Disney World it's just it's showing you everything now of course you can click this filter button and you can see the other parks featured land by wait times there's an arrow and there's show list which means you can show like the list of the wait times so that's really fun but we're actually going to start all the way over at the bottom of the screen there's a bunch of buttons down here at the bottom there's one that looks like a house there's the map where we're at the plus with a circle around it the search and the three lines and now we're going to go all the way over to the bottom left and to home because we want to see our home screen now if you have not been logged into your app it probably will start with a login screen or you are able to log in here if it did open the app the same way it opened for me. Uh, so you definitely want to be logged into your Disney account. Your Disney account is the same for if you have um, anything with anything through Disney accounts, not Disney Plus. Disney Plus is separate, but like any kind of Disney account you have, um, the, that's the account you need to use. If you don't have an account, you should make one, especially if you're going on vacation. If you have not already, I I, I don't know why you're listening to this if you haven't made an account yet. You're, you're trying to learn the apps, but that's just me. So as you can see, first it says, hello, Maddie. It says, that's my name because this is my account. Uh, it will say your name for your screen, obviously. Discover the most magical place on earth. Right below it, it says Disney Genie Service, Disney Genie Plus Service. This is a place where you can purchase Genie Plus for your upcoming vacation. And I do recommend that you purchase Genie Plus for some parks for certain days if you think it's necessary. I think it's pretty great. The thing about Genie Plus, though, the unfortunate <laughs> unfortunateness of Genie Plus now is that you have to buy it per day. And so you have to, as a guest, purchase Genie Plus. So that's another reason why it is very critical that you know where to purchase Genie Plus at on the app. Because if you can't find it, you're going to be in trouble when you go to the park. So that's why I'm doing this video, to help you guys out. Underneath that, it says Upcoming Plans, and it says My Day. And it says Start Here to Plan Your Day and click Get Started Now. Now when you click Get Started Now, it says like a magical way to make the most of your day. Share what attractions, entertainment, dining experiences are important. So Becca's Disney Genie considers the possibilities and crafts. So this is the Disney Genie service to start your day. And I can't do it because I'm not going to the Disney parks anytime soon. So I don't have any park reservations. But if you have a park reservation, you do want to do this before you go. You don't have to do it like as soon as you book your trip. You can wait until like right before you're going on your trip because there might be new things that open or whatever. But this is a great thing to do. You click, can click start now and you click the date. But look, see, I don't have any tickets, so I can't do it. But generally, you can click a date and then you click a park like Magic, Epcot, Hollywood, Animal Kingdom. And then you can um, go from there clicking like attractions you want to do, shows you want to see, 
places you want to eat, and it will give you recommendations for when the best times are to do those things, to go eat or to go ride this ride, like when it's predicted to have the lowest wait time, which I think is a really cool service, and it's definitely something you should check out. Underneath, they have, like, it says Magic Kingdom Park, um, today's show times. So that's, these are the hours for the parks right here. As you can see, there's a little line under the castle for Magic Kingdom, and you can go over to Epcot. Then there's Hollywood Studios and Animal Kingdom. That's just a quick way to see the hours for the day. And then you can click on today's show times and actually see like when the fireworks and stuff are. So like as you can see, Happily Ever After is 8 p.m. Luminous is at 9. Fantastic's at 9:30, etc. And you can scroll and find parades um, and other shows. And you can see the show times for all of these great things throughout your day which is very beneficial because they don't really do the guides anymore like the paper guides in the parks but also you can kind of plan your trip because if you scroll back up like you see it says like the 20th um you can't change the date on here but if you go online you can generally change the date so that this um accordingly matches with your trip hours if you go online to mydisneyexperience.com and you go over and you look it all up but i'm not doing that today we're just doing this and then of course you can see the park hours and the park hours does let you change the date as you can see magic kingdom's open till 11 p.m which is pretty cool if you have a park hopper it's a great option if you can stay up that late because the wait times are definitely going to be lower in the evening when all the kids have gone to bed but yeah you can see the park hours which we already saw and then underneath is the virtual queue. This is another spot you need to know about. You need to be able to find this on your app. This is the only place you can do virtual queue as far as I've seen. Like I've tried many different places and virtual queue is the best easiest to find right here. I think you can find it under my day, but it automatically takes you to like the page and then it takes you right back here. So you want to click when it's time to join your virtual queue, you want to click join virtual queue. Now this this is another thing you have to do day of just like Genie Plus so it's definitely best to have multiple people in your party because one person can book the a virtual queue if you're going to a park that requires a virtual queue and one person can book the Genie Plus Lightning Lanes if you have Genie Plus. Now um, I don't know if, the if there's been any changes to Genie Plus but when I went to Disneyland Genie Plus you couldn't start booking until after the park opened and I don't know if that's still the same if that's the same at Disney World, because the last time I went to Disney World, you can book them as early as 7 a.m. I assume it's the same, but if it's not, I don't know. You guys need to let me know if you do know. But um, just to let you guys know, there are two virtual queues available right now. Tron and Epcot has Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind. And the virtual queues open at 7 a.m. and 1 p.m. But to book the one at 1 p.m., you have to be in the park of the... Uh, attraction that you're trying to book which means you either have to have a park reservation for the park that day or a park hopper and have already hopped over before 1 p.m because you have to be inside of the park so park hopping being able to be open all day now is su super beneficial to the park hoppers who wanted to ride the rides and they couldn't do the 7 a.m one because they either just couldn't get it or they didn't want to risk getting it too early because tron they are very strict about the wait time about the times like unless you're like you know, I couldn't park up till two. Like, they don't have any excuses now. You can park up whenever you want. So if you do get the 7 a.m. time, you can park up, go ride the ride, and leave and go to another park, which is really great and a really cool benefit now because you see you had to wait till 2 p.m. to park up, and I'm really glad they brought it back. Scrolling down, they have save time waiting in line with end Lightning Lane Entry. You click Learn More. This is a great place to learn uh, all about the Lightning Lanes. Disney Genie Plus service lets you use the Lightning Lane entrance at select attractions and experiences in the Walt Disney World theme parks. On average, guests can enter two to three attractions or experiences per day using the Lightning Lane entrance if the first selection is made early in the day. Plus, Genie Plus service offers these additional features. Attraction photo downloads from select Disney Photo Pass attraction photos. Enjoy Disney Photo Pass lenses and audio tales. I've never done the audio tales, but I have done the lenses and the attraction photos are a great bonus, of course. And then if you scroll down, it says how to purchase 
Disney Genie Plus. Now, this is very crucial, you guys. You need to know this. Guests may purchase Disney Genie Plus service by selecting the theme park you are planning to visit that day or selecting the multiple parks option if you are planning to visit more than one theme park. So you definitely need to know that if you are have if you have a park hopper, you need to do the multiple park option so that you can book multiple parks throughout your day or you are going to be limited to one park. And the pricing, of course, can vary for Disney Genie Plus. I've seen it up to all the way $30, and I've seen it as low as $15. You keep scrolling, there's more fun things. Here is uh, Designing Disney Parks. There's a little info about history. That That's just a little fun if you guys need it. That's not really necessary. Disney Photo Pass. You can see your photos. I can still see my photos from my last trip, apparently, even though they said yesterday that it was they were going to expire. They're still here. Oh, I just can't save them anymore. Yesterday was the last day to save them. So that's really fun. That's that's a place to see that. Um, unlock exciting experiences with your Magic Band Plus. You guys, Magic Band Pluses are really great. I can do an episode on Magic Band Pluses if you would like. I'm not going to go into super big detail here. But I talked about Star Wars Batu Bounty Hunters on my episode about Star Wars Galaxy's Edge a little bit. I don't really know everything. The Disney Fab 50 Quest is fun. Enchanted Nighttime is spectacular as it means your band lights up with the nighttime shows. You can personalize your band and you can buy all kinds of pretty designs. You can buy these on Shop Disney before your trip. You do not have to wait until you get to Disney. They're going to be more expensive. I, the recommendation for me, if I were to recommend you to buy when to buy Magic Band, is actually... Whenever you book your trip and you have that option to buy your Magic Bands, that's when I recommend it because that's the cheapest you will find a Magic Band Plus um, available to you. I think it's like $10 cheaper. I'm not really sure. All right. After hours, a special event with lower wait times for favorite attractions. If you are interested in lower wait times, this is a great option. I'm also a travel agent. I can help you book your vacations. I don't know if I can actually book these kind of tickets for you, but these are a cool thing. Uh, you can purchase tickets right here on the app where you can get lower um, wait times and you can get some snacks and they have it at Magic, Hollywood, and Epcot as it seems. So no Animal Kingdom. Sorry about that if you're a big Animal Kingdom gal. Leave your photo memory on Cinderella Castle. There's a mural of memories. Oh, that's cool. I don't know what that is. Epcot International Festival of the Arts. You can click View Guide. This is the current festival at Epcot as of recording this video. This will probably be a different festival depending on when you're listening to this episode. But as of January 20th, it is Festival of the Arts. And you can get like a full guide here. I'm not really going to go into detail here, but you can learn about Disney on Broadway dining packages, the food, all the stuff that is live music art defying gravity visual art animation academy oh that's fun they have animation academy at festival of the arts that's awesome i love animation academy so i'm definitely gonna have to go to that one year uh you can paint do a paint by numbers like you get to paint like squares and end up being a part of a big mural there's artful photo ops there's kids chalk art chalk art galleries figment brush with the masters there's all kinds of great things Festival merchandise, you can get a gift card, you can get a map of the offerings, all kinds of great options here. And it's very helpful, very helpful guide there to the Festival of the Arts. Um, the festivals over at Epcot are Festival of the Arts, International Flower and Garden Festival, Food and Wine, the longest festival, and Festival of the Holidays. I've been to Flower and Garden and Festival of the Holidays. And if you guys would like me to do episodes on those festivals, I would love to, but having only been to two out of four, I don't know if it's going to be super helpful. I might just do one big episode just talking about all the stuff about them because I don't know that much about some. Tell your Disney story. You can buy the Memory Maker. Um, I can actually, as a travel agent, book your trip for you, and you can buy the Memory Maker whenever you initially pay for your trip and you buy your tickets and stuff, so you have your Memory Maker included. But if you didn't do that or you already have your trip booked and you're just listening to this episode to help you know everything about this app whenever you go to use it at Disney. And you can buy your memory maker right here. It is more expensive if you buy it once you're on your trip, whereas if you buy it in advance, it can be a little bit cheaper. The price has gone up, so I'm not actually sure what the price is. 
but it is there. There's a special ticket offer for Florida residents. That's a great offer if you're a Florida resident. Treasure your vacation memories. You can make a video memory of your trip. That's pretty cool. Reserve your advanced tickets to Cirque du Soleil. Um, that's at um, Disney Springs, which is free to go to at any time of the year. So if you do live in Florida, that's a cool thing. And there's Minnie Mouse Trivia, which is on the Play Disney Parks app, which you have to download. There's an ad for the Disney Chase Visa card, which you can get good discount offers if you have a Disney Chase Visa card randomly throughout the year. They also have some other benefits like a character photo off where you get way less of a line for certain characters. I've seen like a Star Wars one in Disneyland. They have like one in Epcot. They used to. I don't know if it's still there with like Mickey and friends and it's really cool. Get ready for your next trip to Disney Plus. Disney Plus also has a great offer for subscribers. If you're going to Disney, you can actually get a free dining plan for select dates. So you should definitely go hit me up at Maddie World at Your Feet to find out when that is. And maybe it's within your trip range if you want to go and you haven't booked it. And you can get a great trip offer and then shop the stories you love. That is just a link to the Disney store. Now, going back over to the map, there's a lot here with the map. So as I said before, you can click the filter and filter to a park. Now I'm going to filter to Magic Kingdom because that's everybody's favorite park. And I will click apply. And then as you see, it zoomed out and it's showing me like a very zoomed out version of Magic Kingdom. You can zoom in. You just pinch, squeeze, pinch like two fingers, zoom in. I don't really know how to describe it. Um, I'm just like, start with two fingers and I just make them go wider. So you can see the entirety of Magic Kingdom Park now. As you can see by the wait, by the arrow, it says wait times. So currently I am seeing wait times for attractions. Like the train looks like it's only 10 minutes right now, which is really great. But you can click that arrow and see way more stuff. Like if you want to meet some characters, you can click on characters. Now, sometimes I'm sorry about that noise. Now, sometimes it's easier to find them on the map if you're in the park, but not being in the park. I like to click show list to see the list of the characters. Look, there's Anastasia, Aladdin, Ariel. I like that they note that it's the animated story and not the live action Ariel because there is a difference. You can meet all kinds of characters as you can see here, even some of the country bears, which is getting a new show. So that's great news for country bear fans, but you can see. If you like are looking for a certain character, like you're looking for Ariel, you can click on Ariel and click find on the map and it will show you where it's at on the map. And this is very zoomed in. So you can just zoom out a little bit with your fingers, bring them inward from out. And as you can see, this is around like here's seven dwarfs. This is fantasy land, new fantasy land. Um, I actually was thinking about a whole episode to this, like this morning at like 5 a.m. So I might do a whole episode on fantasy land, but you can see where... Ariel is and so that can also based on where you are in the park like that's that's really what's beneficial about using the find on map is when you're in the park and you're trying to find out how the best path to get to there now of course click that drop down again and you can see other things like dining now because I'm on Magic Kingdom filters I'm this is only gonna be Magic Kingdom but if you want to go to a different park, you can click that filter button and go to any other park and see all the fun things. I just wanted you guys to know that these buttons are very helpful to you. I still have the list up, but you can hide the list. You can swipe it down or just click hide list at the top. You can, of course, just see the map and zoom in, like I said, and you can see where all the dining locations are all around the park. I like to look at the list because I usually know the places by name, but if you're not very familiar with Disney, Looking at the map might be the best because, you know, you are you can look around the attractions you're going to do the most and find the places to eat uh, based off of that. Because as you can see when you zoom in, you can see the names of these attractions like Seven Dwarfs Mine Train. Look, you can see there's the Friar's Nook right here. And if you keep going, you can see Cheshire Cafe. You can see Cosmic Rays. Like, you can see in accordance to these attractions what's nearby. There's Be Our Guest. I can do an episode on actual dining or just my personal picks on dining or whatever. If you guys want, please let me know. Um, but I'm going to go back to show list. And as you can see, you can scroll through. Um, now, some of these are like mobile order friendly. Some of these are just little quick service spots. And some of these are actually ones that require a dining reservation. And um, so here, here's an example of one, the Crystal Palace. 
So if it requires a dining reservation, you can actually click on the um, place. If you already know in mind what place it is, you can click on the place, go to any place that you want, if you can figure out how to get there. But we, or you can just follow along with me and you can figure that out later. Uh, you can click find on map, get directions. Um, you can join the walk-up list. If you're in the park, I don't know why you're listening to this in the park, but if you are in the park and you or are you listening to this for later, if you're in the park and you didn't get a dining reservation and you maybe want to eat here, you can click join walk-up list and they will let you know when there's a table ready that they can seat you at. Uh, currently, there's a 10-minute wait based off your party size. I don't actually have a current party, so I don't know what that estimated weight is based off of, what party size. I assume it's like two people, but I don't know. Uh, there's also reserved dining right next to that. And then the menu. I always recommend you guys, if this is a place that you can reserve dining specifically before your trip, the best thing for you to do is to look at the menu. Click the view menu button. Because if you're thinking about booking a dining reservation because, oh, this place has characters, because this one does, it has the Winnie the Pooh characters, um, if it has characters and you're like, oh, I want to do character dining, you want to make sure your kids are actually going to eat the food at the restaurant. Because I've been to, like, Akershus over in, I don't even know how to say it, um, the princess dining over in Norway, and my mom, uh, and grandma, they paid for it when we were kids, and I swear they will tell you time and time and time again that we did not want to eat any of the food, because it's all, like, Norwegian food, because it's in Norway. So you want to make sure that your kids are actually going to eat the food. Now this one's actually pretty good pricing for breakfast, $48 a person. It's 61 a person for an adult, by the way, for lunch and dinner, and then it's 40 per child. So that is kind of pricey. Looking at those prices, I do like that it includes the pricing at the top, so you know how much you're spending per person. So you're like, is this worth $40 for my kid? And look, there's not even that many options, so that's a good thing to think about is is that worth it for my kid if that's all that they have to eat and if it's not it's probably not the best idea now I could do an episode where I talk about places I recommend to eat but I haven't eaten everywhere in Disney World so that is also a little bit hard because I have never actually eaten at some of these places I have eaten there but I think they changed their menu um lots of great options jungle navigation skipper canteen liberty tree tavern is a great one they have a ton of options. Main Street Bakery, y'all, that is on a bakery. That is Starbucks. They just also sell baked goods. If you want, like, bakery items, go to the confectionery. It's next door. You'll smell it. I promise. That's on Main Street. But, yeah, there's lots of great options here. I'm not going to really go into any more detail on the options and stuff. I just wanted to tell you guys about the tip to look at the menu. Now, of course, like I said, you can filter the other parks. You just click the filter. And the park. Now, usually if you click, so if you click filter and you're on Magic Kingdom and then you go click Epcot, it's still going to include Magic Kingdom. You have to tap the Magic Kingdom one again in order to remove the Magic Kingdom option. But look, there's other options here. Like when, when you're on dining, you can click what kind of food you want. So actually, instead of clicking a park, you can scroll down and like if you want Mexican food, you can click Mexican, maybe unclick Epcot and click apply. And it will give you a list of every Mexican food option that they have around Walt Disney World. They're mainly going to be in Epcot, just so you know. But um, they do have a few. Look, there's even some at Coronado Springs, if you can stay there or get over there one day on your trip. And that's a cool thing that you can do. I'm going to go and click that. You can click Dining Experience. Like, if you want character dining locations, if you want to know which one's a character, you can click on Character. And you can see which places have character dining, which is really cool. And look, you can also join the walk-up list of those as well. You can join the walk-up list pretty much anywhere. Quick service, etc. Mobile orders. Disney dining plan, Disney quick service dining plan. If you booked a dining plan for your trip, that's a great thing to know is which uh, places accept your Disney dining plan credits and your quick service credits because you do not want to end up eating at the wrong place and wasting your money because you spent lots of money on that Disney dining plan. I assume. So I'm going to click the X because I'm done with that. And then I'm going to click this little arrow next to dining again and show you guys some more things up here. Uh, entertainment, like those are like shows and stuff. Restrooms. You guys, if you're literally in Disney, like let's say you're in Epcot. I'm going to go click filter in Epcot. And I'm going to 
hide the list, scroll, zoom in, you can actually find where the nearest restroom is to you. Like, it will show a little arrow of where you are on the map. You can find the nearest restroom. I always forget about this function. And so then I'm like, where's the bathroom? <laughs> but this is a great thing to know if you're, like, not like me and you're, like, so in the zone of, like, oh, my God, I have to go to the bathroom that you forget. You can just look it up on the app. You can also click on Photo Pass and see where you can get photo spots around the parks. This is great if you have the memory maker to know because you can make either a list or you can just see like where you can take some photos. And some of these have a different little thing. Oh, they're lenses. Oh, that's cool. Um, so that means like that's that's a lens that you can take a photo with on your um, Disney Photo Pass lenses. And then there's obviously like photo ops, like here's Italy one where you can take a picture. And that's really cool that you can see photos. Click the arrow again. Guest services. This is this is a crucial one to me because there's a lot of guest services. You can literally find press penny machines. It's called coin press machines. So for guest services, I actually don't like to look at the map. I like to click list because the service that you may need may be a specific thing and it's a lot easier to sort by that one thing like if you need a baby care center you click show list you click baby care center click find on the map and it will show you where each baby care center is you have to zoom into the park to find it uh this one's right by the crystal palace over in magic kingdom zoom out again animal kingdoms i don't even know where that one is is in discovery island over by the Starbucks, Hollywood Studios, it's at the front of the park, not surprised, they're usually at the front of the park, um, let's go to Epcot, and Epcot is over by the Odyssey and the Mexico Pavilion, those are great things to know, and then I'm going to click that the back arrow at the top and go back to this list, you wanted to find coin press machines, ECV rentals, if you need to rent an ECV on your trip, this is beneficial. If you need first aid, if you need to rent a locker, if you need uh, to find lost and found because you lost something, um, merchandise mobile checkout, those are really cool. I'll talk to, those, talk to you about those in a minute. Mobile food and beverage ordering, you can actually see on the map uh, on here. My favorite one, this is my favorite one to look at, portable phone charging system kiosks. Now, this is my favorite one for a reason. If you buy the Fuel Rod portable charger, uh, which you can buy at this machine or you can buy it on Amazon, I recommend buying on Amazon. I'll link it on my Spotify page for you guys because I have an affiliate link for you. Uh, you can get two for the price of one. And you can basically, around all of Walt Disney World, um, purchase, you take this like uh, portable charger, and once you finish, like once it's dead, you can walk up to these machines and pop and uh, click swap and pop it in and it gives you a fully charged one for free which is super cool because then you do not have to charge your portable charger and you have one less thing to charge now the downside to this is the cords it comes with are made for the old charger light light lightning charger style so if you've upgraded to an iphone 15 like i have you have to now buy an adapter for your charger because you have to have a usb-c to usb-c because I don't have a USB-C to a USB cord, apparently. So I had to buy an adapter, and then I had to use my mom's. So look, there's several all over the resort, and they're not just in the parks. They are also in the resorts. So if you're staying on property, you can look like here's one at Fort Wilderness. You can also just swap it at your resort, like Polynesian, Grand Floridian, Wilderness Lodge. Um, but yeah, look, like there's plenty over here. There's one on Main Street. There's some in Tomorrowland. There's lots of places to swap the kiosks. You can just move around the map to kind of find them on your own accord. Oh, now it comes with the USB-C adapter. Okay, well, that's nice, but it's kind of too late now. Uh, I already have one. Uh, Rider Switch is great if you um, have a young kid and uh, maybe you need to stay with the baby. When you need to stay with the baby, you can switch turns with a uh, riding the ride with your kid so that you both get to ride and someone's staying with your baby at all times because you can't leave your baby with people, obviously. Stroller rentals, wheelchair rentals. Uh, there are services for guests with disabilities. These are very crucial for those people. Uh, I'm very, very big fan of how Disney is very helpful toward people with visual 
mobility, lightning sensitivity, hearing disabilities, any kind of disabilities at the Disney Resort. I think they're they're very beneficial. Um, I've seen a TikTok. There's uh, there was a girl who is blind at Disney, and she of course had a service dog, but she also had this device that she could use where she could put it in her ears, earphones, and it would guide her around and tell her like a description of her surroundings so she knows what is around her because she can't see. And I think that's a beautiful thing. And I wish more places were very helpful to people with disabilities. Now back to the bottom of the screen, let's click the plus and see what the options are here. So of course it immediately pops up. This is, this is the most crucial thing to know. If you learn anything from me in this episode, it is what the plus does. Check dining availability, order food. Merchandise mobile checkout, shop memory maker, buy tickets and passes, make or modify park reservations, which is hope soon probably uh, going to be gone, hopefully, but this is mainly for annual pass holders because we no longer need park reservations for date-based tickets, and view my D genie day and tip board. Now, the first one I'm going to click is check dining availability. I'm probably going to split this episode in half because this is long. Uh, now, it, it did a little login thing, face ID. You click your party size, like I can click two, you can click the date, and then you can click a time. And once you click a time, you can literally see every, like I clicked after 4 p.m., every location on property that has dining reservations and the times. But if you want to filter it, like let's say you're in Disney Springs, I click apply. You can filter it down to Disney Springs. Now, for some reason, this also includes resorts in the area. So like the first one is at Port Orleans. So do read it and make sure it says Disney Springs, but you can see availability at all these locations in Disney Springs and nearby hotels. The nearby hotels are on um, like the boat, like you can go take the boat over to these hotels. So if you took a bus to Disney Springs, you could take a boat to these hotels if you wanted to eat there and take it back to Disney Springs and take the bus back to your hotel. You can fully do that. You can use the transportation to however you choose. I can talk about transportation as well in a different episode. Um, but I'm going to click X out of that. Go back to my plus. Order food. These are the mobile food order locations. Sorry about that. Um, with the mobile food order locations, you can see, like, there's town in Magic Kingdom. I can click up here. There's six in Epcot. There's 12 in Hollywood Studios six in Animal Kingdom, five in Disney Springs. You can click on each park. And then when I click on the, like, the line where it says Epcot, it goes back up and then I can go down to the next park. Or you can scroll through and click them. I'm gonna do Epcot, just to show you guys. There's not very many in Epcot. The one that has the most is Hollywood and that is because of Galaxy's Edge. I think everywhere in Galaxy's Edge you can pretty much mobile order, except for Ogus Cantina. So that's pretty cool. And, like, it shows you the next arrival time. So, like, if it's going to be a long time and you do really want to eat somewhere, like, 72 to, 100, 72 to 102 minutes, you definitely want to make your order for later. If you, like, if you wanted to eat here for lunch for Woody's Lunchbox, you want to make your order now. <laughs> but some of these say now, so, you know, you can wait. But you can actually, like, you click begin order, click a time, I believe. Like, let me... Let me just throw something randomly in here. Let's see what it does. Add it to my cart. Go to my cart. Okay, it clicks review order summary. But um, there is a way. You know, when I click on it. Okay. So when I click on the place that has a mobile order, you can scroll through and you can go ahead and mobile order for like later. Like if you want to eat here for dinner, you can click whatever time you think you're going to be hungry. And you can go ahead and mobile order. And that way if you decide... And that way, if you decide to eat somewhere else or you left the park, you can still cancel your order before you actually go and order food. So I'm going to click the X out of that. And then merchandise mobile checkout. This is super great. This is one of my favorite new features. If you are paying with a credit card, you guys, in some of these stores, this is so beneficial. I remember being in Universal and wishing they had this because... It needed it. <laughs> like, it needed it. So, sorry, I'm turning, I was turning Do Not Disturb on, on my computer because I keep getting my email things and it's driving me crazy because I forgot to do that before I started recording. Um, so, as you can see, there's a few shops here in Magic. 
Epcot, Hollywood, Animal, and Disney Springs. There's not that many stores that do this mobile merchandise checkout, but you will see a sign in any store that offers it telling you that you can do mobile merchandise checkout. The one I recommend the most to do this for is actually World of Disney because the store has millions of rooms and it has a million people in it all the time and they're all trying to check out at the same time. And that line gets long. Now I'm going to go click the X, click the plus again, and you can shop the memory maker. You can buy tickets and passes. I'm not going to bother with those. And then, of course, view my Disney, view my Genie Day and tip board. Your tip board is where they will tell you wait times for rides. They will tell you, like, if you have Genie Plus, look like it tells me what time I can book an experience for a ride. Hope it's not trying to do that. Um, you can see showtimes. You can see pretty much everything here. Disney Genie is the best thing in the world to have whenever you are in Disney. This is Magic Kingdom Park. You can see it for all parks, of course, um, because you can actually book it when the next available time is to book a Genie Plus. Now, Genie Plus has its own rules. That's a whole separate thing, but I'm just give you a I might could do a video on it, but I'm going to give you a quick little note on Genie Plus. You can book your first one at 7 a.m. And then you can book your next Genie Plus either after you ride or every two hours, whichever comes first. So if you actually manage to get a Genie Plus Fast Pass for 9 a.m., you're not going to be able to, you, you can book your next Fast Pass after you ride the ride. Now, if you get it later than 10 a.m., you can book another one at 10 a.m. and you can stack your Genie Plus lanes. So it really is dependent upon the available times, how busy the park is. Sometimes you can't get them until super late in the evening. Um, when we went in 2021, I did not get, we did not get early times like this for Genie Plus. Like at 10.58 in the morning, we could not, like we were getting th these times at 7 in the morning. So um, I think that has to do partly with the less busy time right now, but also the increase of Genie Plus and the fact that you can no longer purchase it with your tickets because everybody would do it when they bought their tickets. So they already had it and all they had to do was go book their Genie Plus lanes. And there's also individual lightning lanes and it will show you, look like it shows me it costs $11 for Seven Doors Mind Train. That's cheap. And when the window starts, it says 8.40 p.m. But if you uh, click on a ride that has an individual lightning lane, and you click like lightning lane whatever it will usually give you times like other times first thing in the morning at 7 a.m because the park's not open yet and you can pick like all the way throughout the day we bought one for tron um that's another one you can buy lightning lane for is the tron uh light cycle run we bought one for Tron. look like you can still buy it right now for 20 dollars uh, on our trip for like 4 p.m at 7 a.m so that we knew when we had a set time and we had a plan for when we were going to ride Tron because we didn't want to try to do G virtual queue because we didn't want to stress about not being able to get it and then not remembering to book the individual lane and then not being able to ride the ride because it being on virtual queue it wasn't included in my mom's DAS pass. Now the next thing you can do at the bottom here is the search. I just click search and you can click up here at the top and you can search for literally anything and everything. Um, Anything that you want. Like, if you know you want Star Wars, you can search Star Wars. When you search Star Wars, you will find all the stuff related to Star Wars. All the stores, the hours of the stores, everything. So, you can search whatever you want. So, if you have no idea what you're doing, this is this is also a great tool. I never need this tool, but it's a great tool. Um, then, there's the three lines at the bottom. Now... There's some options here we've already talked about. So this is another place I like to tell you is important. So the plus and the three lines are the ones that I use the most in the map. Those are the three things on this app that are the most important. The home, if you wanna scroll through the home and you wanna do things through the home, you sure can. But everything's pretty much right here on the three lines. So it says, welcome in your name. Tip board, Disney photo pass lenses, Genie Day, tickets and passes, future plans, Magic Mobile, virtual queues, mobile food orders, there's photos, there's your resort hotel, park hours and info, merchandise mobile checkout, 
play Disney Parks, Magic Bands, and more. Shop Disney. Chat with us, like, if you had need help. Disability Access Service. This is because my mom had it on the previous strip. This is where this will show up if you get qualify for the service and you get that. I don't think that, that that option shows up if you do not have DAS or someone in your family doesn't have DAS that can include you because I think anyone else can book the passes besides them. Transportation, that's another great one. And then of course there's scroll down, there's a little bit more. These these are great too. My profile, healthcare services, accessibility, property rules, cast compliment, that's a great option. Like if you met a really nice cast member, you remember their name, you can give them a compliment and that might make their day. Um, you can click link to account. This is where you can link your tickets. There's, you can also do it under tickets and passes, but if you scroll all the way down here, you can do it here. If you haven't linked your tickets to the app, listen up, this is where you link your tickets. <laughs> and you can link more. You can link um, your magic bands, your tickets, your memory maker. So basically, if you didn't buy a vacation package and everything was automatically linked to your account, if you bought your tickets and everything separately, this is where you would go in order to link that information. Car locator. If you drive and you park your car, this is the most beneficial thing in the world to you because you can remember where your car is. Help, privacy, and legal. But don't be like me with using car locator and forget to say, I left or I got to my car because I, I still was like in the park like a day later and it was telling me like, you need to get back to your car? I was like, hey, I already did that. <laughs> so anyway, scroll all the way back up to the top. This is going to be a long episode for you guys, but it's okay. So I already talked about the tip board. The Disney Photo Pass lenses are included with Disney Genie Plus. And of course, there's a notice. Like some of these use um, technology that detects the coordinates of key points on your face because they can put things on your face. And there's also location and stuff. You have to click. You acknowledge that you bought it and accept it. If you decline it, you can't use the lenses. I'm going to close the tour, but you can read through the tour if you want. And you just swipe through, and then you can take a picture with the cool lenses. Like, there's all kinds of cool lenses here. I can't do it because I don't have Disney Genie service. But um, it is really cool. Whenever you do have Disney Genie services, there's lots of cute lenses that are really fun. My Disney Genie day. That's the same thing as my day. Look, the tip board's right there. Click back. Tickets and passes. This is where you will see your tickets and your passes. You can... Oh, look, it still shows that. Um, click the plus at the top, and it says select tickets, buy annual passes, link tickets and passes. So you can also link them here. You can buy an annual pass here, just in case you were wondering. Yeah, it's $1,500. <laughs> but uh, that's as someone who doesn't live in Florida. I'm sure there are other options for people who live in Florida. You click link tickets and passes, and it takes me back to that same screen. Um, yeah, I never use the mini golf ever. <laughs> uh, I can't believe it hasn't expired, to be honest with you. Because that was from last year. Future plans. This is a screen I love because if you have any plans at all, this is where you're going to see them. This is all of your plans. Like you will see book. Like if you're the person who's not booking, if you're the person just following along and maybe you get lost, this is this is what to look up to find people. You can see dining reservations, you can see upcoming genie lanes, you can see individual lighting lanes, virtual queues, everything's right here in your future plans. You can go on the website and click add to my day for shows, and you can also see those. Like if you decide to like go to this certain show, you can add it to your day for that time and you can see it on your future plans. Magic Mobile, this is a super off, off, awesome option if you don't want to pay for Magic Man Plus. They have great things, but some people just don't want to pay for it. You click on this, and basically, you can make a pass. Like, I already have one here, but you can click plus and make a pass for any of the guests on the app. But I already have a pass. So make your pass if you haven't made it yet, and you can click on your pass, and you can select it to share. Click select, share. You can share the pass via messages if you um, like are doing it for someone else, or you can add it to your Apple Wallet. Like, it says these guests already have an Apple Pass, so um, mine's already added to my Apple Wallet, so I can't add it. But you can add it to your Apple Wallet. And if you have an Apple Watch, you can use your Apple Watch as well for this, so you don't have to use your phone. But like, let me just show you really quick um, on the wallet. Here's my Walt Disney World. And you can 
use it to your wallet basically as your ticket, which is really cool. Here we'll go back. Um, virtual queues, we already talked about that. Mobile food orders. This is for upcoming orders. This is where you can see any orders that you may have. I don't have any, but you can click the plus there and order. You can also do it at the bottom of the screen. Your photos, if you got any attraction photos, if you took any photos around the parks, this is where you're going to be able to see it. Your resort hotel. This one is so crucial, you guys. It's insane. So I don't have anything here, so I can't actually show you guys, but typically it shows you your resort hotel, like wherever you're staying, and you can actually see bus wait times for your hotel. And that's pretty great because if it's cold, you don't want to be waiting outside for really long. So you get an estimated time. It's not always accurate. It can get delayed. But it's helpful so that you can know when to head to the bus stop. But unless you like walked all the way from the front of the resort to your hotel room and you know how far that walk is, it's not really that helpful because I was on the opposite end of the, hot of the resort. So going to the bus stop did take a minute. So I need to account for that, and I didn't know how long it would take. Um, park hours and info. That's basically what we saw already at the home screen. You click today, and you can see the show times. Magic bands and more. That's where you can see and link your magic bands. Um, I have this other guest under me. I need to remove that. This is my magic band plus. My other magic bands before they upgraded to the magic plus and they stopped selling these. I have several of these. Admission card. Um you can buy get so something people don't really know is i can book vacations for you but also when you book your trips you can click like get paper tickets mailed to you and you can mail your tickets and you can use like a paper card as your ticket for everything if you would like and so you can get like an admission card um and then you can make a pin here for um charging your magic band so, um, yeah, you don't have to have your credit card with you all the time. You can use your Magic Man. I would still bring around your ID if you are going to drink because they might card you. But you don't necessarily need your credit card unless um, you want to. But you can, yeah, you can charge the room. Shop Disney. That's just going to take you to Shop Disney's website like it just did for me. Chat, disability service. These are, this is where you can book your DAS eligible rides. Um, I can talk about that with Genie Plus. I'll probably do a video on those. Transportation. This is where you can see like all the transportation around the resort, like the minivans. The minivans are via Lyft, so you do need the Lyft app for that. But like they have the car locator, you can see the Skyliner, uh, which is currently under maintenance, but it will be opened probably the day after tomorrow. Parking, bus service, monorail. You can see, like, on the map, like, where all these things are. Um, bus service, you will find at pretty much every hotel. Actually, every hotel and property. Skyliner, you will find at the Skyliner Base Resorts. Those are Pop Century, Art of Animation, Caribbean Beach, Riviera. Um, those are the resorts on the Skyliner, and they're connected between Hollywood Studios and Epcot. Um, minivan, you can use anywhere. You have to pay for that on the Lyft app. Um, monorail, those are the monorail resorts over at the Magic Kingdom, but the monorail can also take you on a separate leap to Epcot from the TTC. So the monorail goes around the TTC, the Ticket and Transportation Center. This is where you park if you park in Magic Kingdom. You do not actually park by the park. You have to take more transportation into the park. Um, and then the resorts, the Polynesian, the Grand Floridian, and the Contemporary, and of course, Magic Kingdom. Water transportation is typically the Disney Springs resorts. Um, I can't remember exactly which resorts those are. Oh, look, they're right here. So they have a few. Um, Fort Wilderness, Grand Floridian, Polynesian, and Wilderness Lodge are Magic Kingdom area ones. Those will take you to Magic Kingdom. And you can also take between the resorts. Um, Boardwalk Villas, Beach Club, Villas, Yacht Club, Resort, Dolphin Hotel, and Swan Hotel. You can take boats to Epcot and Hollywood Studios, and the Disney Springs area has Old Key West, Saratoga Springs, and the Port Orleans, Riverside, and French Quarter resorts. Great options as well. And of course, there's parking. You can park at all of these parks. Parking is a fee every day if you park, if you um, drive. I've been told if you stay on property, your parking is free. 
like if you decide to drive and park because you it's included in your stay but I'm not sure about that so I wouldn't quote me on that but back over to these three lines and like I said there's other great things here like if you want to compliment a cast member but yeah that's basically it that is the Mind Disney Experience app. I hope you enjoyed this video and me talking about everything you need to know about the Mind Disney Experience app. And come follow along for next week for more information on the Disney parks. Um, let me know what you guys want to hear me talk about. I can talk about each individual land in each park. Like I've done a few already of like, like I've done Avengers Campus, I've done Galaxy's Edge. I can do all the different lands in Hollywood and Magic, whatever. I can just do a whole video on each park. Um, I mean a whole episode so up to you guys whatever you want me to do do the poll below on if you're on Spotify listening um, to let me know what you guys want me to talk about uh, because I would love to know what to talk about you can also probably go do the poll on my Instagram at magical memories Maddie thanks for listening <laughs>